should be titled Strong Cocaine Number Two. Today we're going to talk about the moist man's problem and how it impacts and intersects with the economy. One of the problems that we have is we have a bunch of men who were raised by single mothers and that is problematic because these men are very feminine in behavior, feminine in presentation, and very feminine in life. And they wonder why they're losing with women. When you present a woman with feminine energy as a man, she's immediately repelled. This video was brought to you by B-School for Hustlers. I want you to enroll in the Intellectual Property School because I'm going to teach you how to do what I do. Now, once again, you're not going to do it on the level that I do it because I have 14 years of business experience before I came to YouTube. So there might be some people who will do well, but I guarantee you within six to 12 months, you can be making five to $15,000 per month. And intellectual property is one of the best things you can do because I'm going to teach you how to make money with a very small YouTube channel. You can have two, three, 4,000 subscribers and make three to $5,000 a month quite easily if you position yourself correctly. And I'm going to teach you all my dirty little secrets, all my tactics and stuff. I'm going to teach you how to write a book. I'm going to teach you how to start a YouTube channel. I'm going to teach you how to create an online course. I'm going to teach you how to do a podcast. These are things that I have done consistently over the years and I've been really, really successful. So go below and enroll in the intellectual property school. Now, right now I'm having a pre-launch special. So what I am going to do um, is give you 65% off during the pre-launch because there's not much there and you will get access to home economics. Now, one of the things, there's something going on with Teachable where the promo code field doesn't populate. So I'm gonna have to add you guys to home economics. Give me a little time, but I should get you added to home economics. So go below and hit the home economics link in the intellectual property link and enroll in intellectual property school today. All right, so let's start off with the moist man problem. If you were to go to any online dating website or portal, this is a big source of contention for many men. Who would pay for the first date? Now, I am from the old school. Like, I'm gonna tell you what the era that I'm from. One of the things I used to do as a young boy, as a young man, is I would create these cassette tapes called, if this don't get me some, nothing else will. These romantic, beautiful songs. Fun fact, the other night I was with my girl and I put on a playlist that's called Classic Fucking Music. And she loved it and she came several times. So it still works to the day. So I come from an era where men say, I'm, you know, Al Green, I'm sick and tired of being lonely. We come from an era where men dealt in truth, dealt in reality. And right now we have a bunch of soy boys that deal with fiction and false narratives. And this whole notion of who pays for the date. If you were part of my early disruptive male program, you would know the four mandates of a disruptive male is number one, get your economics together. Number two, get your body together. Number three, get your mental together. Number four, date submissive women. Notice one, two, and three have nothing to do with women. Because here's the thing. If you develop yourself as a man and you get your money together, you will actually have your pick of good women. Now, there are many videos talking about the modern women. And I'm gonna call these women savages because just like the moist men were not raised correctly because there, many of them were raised by single mothers or if they had a father in the house, he was weak. Many of these young women were not raised properly either. So you have a bunch of moist men and you have a bunch of savages, female savages. And the problem is they know there's something's wrong. Like when I was dating in my 20s and 30s, you go out on a Saturday night in Atlanta 
and you would see nothing but couples, men and women dating, men and women dating. Now you go out, you see a gang of women, and you see a gang of guys. Because these guys don't know how to relate, because essentially what someone would want to do is holler at a girl in front of his boys and get their approval. Because these men are not men of independent thought or independent action. And the women, like I see a bunch of stuff with the women where women do not know how to be girlfriends, and let alone women do not know how to be wives. So you have a situation where you have men who are lost and you have women are lost. But let me go ahead and explain something to you. If you get yourself together as a man, you can be above the fray. I have no problems dating feminine, infit, fit women. I have no problem dating beautiful women, none whatsoever. But why is that? Because I explore and adapt the four traits of the disruptive man. Number one, I got my economics together. Number two, got to work on the body. Number three, the middles together. And number four, I date submissive women. So I'm hitting like three out of four because I'm currently not working out. So I am still not even practicing all of the disruptive male traits and I'm still doing better than the average man. And I'm gonna to explain to you why. That whole notion of who pays for the date. I like fine dining. I go places where the bill is 250 for a dollars for two people. And I know you're going like, oh man, that's too much money. To your broke ass, that's too much money. To me, it's a small part of my income. And one of the things that I come from an era where I knew how to date, I know how to treat a woman, I know how to format a woman. And because you're so feminized and you're so weak, and once again, I will admit there's a problem dating these female savages. I do not entertain, nor date, nor deal with these female savages. And with that, once again, if you elevate yourself and you put yourself in the position to be a disruptive male, you can find feminine, submissive women to date. They're literally everywhere. There's a lot of women who were raised in a two-parent household who have a respect for masculine authority. So why are you struggling? Kevin Samuel's channel blew up because so many men wanted him as their champion to tell women what was wrong with women. And once again, there are women and there are female savages. Now, there are a lot of submissive, agreeable, easy to deal with women. There's a ton of them. Yes, there's a bunch of savages. And you have to ask yourself, why are you dealing with savages? Why haven't you upgraded? Because here's the thing. If I have a problem in my life, I'm not going to come to the internet and cry about it. I'm going to seek out a solution. And how does this impact the economy? Because we have all these feminine, moist men, we don't have producers, we don't have warriors, we don't have conquerors. We have a bunch of men who are essentially not doing anything with their lives. They're lost. They're dropping out of college. They're not going to college. And if they do go to college, they come out with a BS degree, bullshit degree. And one of the things that is happening, since we have such a lack of producers, like right now, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you want to be a conqueror, you want to be a warrior, the path, the air up here is quite, there's not a lot of people breathing the air up here. There's not a lot because this is one of the reasons that so many people can make these BS YouTube videos and get so many views because there are very few people who are actually doing something with the advice. So this impacts the economy because we have so many people who are not creating, contributing, or building the economy who are just literally on the sidelines. So this impacts the economy greater. I would submit to you, like one of my goals is to create 50,000 corporate citizens. These are people who have a business or businesses that create an income of $250,000. If I can create these 50,000 corporate citizens, I will literally touch millions of people. I would touch wives, 
husbands, children, employees, and whole communities. Because here's the thing, because of the moist man problem, American productivity from a worker standpoint is at an all time low. American productivity from an automated standpoint is very high. And this is one of the reasons people are being automated because a lot of you don't wanna work. And the moist man problem is very, very problematic for the average person, is very problematic for the economy, and it's very problematic for dating. Now, let's get into where the moist men come from me because I speak truth. And the moist men rather live in a false reality than to deal with that strong cocaine. Give you an example. Right now, there's some fat fucker. He's five, six, 300 pounds, and he's an incel. He can't get pussy. He has not had pussy since pussy's had him. And he's at home on the internet looking at all the hot chicks on Instagram and he is pissed off because none of those hot chicks want to suck his little dick. He is pissed off. He's like, why don't they want me? And he doesn't have a firm understanding because he's not a masculine man. He doesn't have a firm understanding of how the world operates. He doesn't have a firm understanding of the grand order of things. In the grand order of things, ask yourself, why did God make the average man bigger than the average woman? Why did God give you testosterone? Why did the God give you muscle? Why did the God give you the ability to think logically? Because from the grand order of things, you're supposed to be a fucking leader. You're the weak bitch. And many men have abdicated the responsibility of being a leader. This is why it's such a big question like who pays for the date? If you're asking yourself as a man in 2022, who pays for the date? You have failed in life because once again, the four mandates of the disruptive male, get your economy together, get your body together, get your mental together. If you do those three things, that will put you in the top 5% of men. And the top 5% of men do not have these problems that you losers and wimps do. Because with the moist men and how they come from me, this is one of the situations that I see. I have multiple YouTube channels and what the moist men will do will go from channel to channel to channel to leave a disparaging comment. Now ask yourself, why would someone who doesn't like me contribute to my success? You're asking, what? When you watch my YouTube videos, when you comment, that's called engagement. That gives me abuse, a boost in the YouTube algorithm. So these people who don't like me, I saw a video, I saw a comment. I'd rather invest in crypto than your online courses. Now I have documented proof, and this is really interesting. I had my incident in October where a lot of people made videos about me talking about my sex life and so on and so forth. This is something that's really interesting. There's a lot of people making videos calling Anton Daniels a fake ass guru. Now, with me having that experience in October, not one person is trying to challenge my business acumen. The lead attorney had to give me my props, had to give me my props because my shit is solid. And this is why I get the moist men chasing after me. Number one, the moist man is feminine. He acts like a woman, he thinks like a woman, and he conducts his life as a woman. Yet he's a man with a penis. And he's confused. Because one of the things that they do, because I'm a masculine man, and I'm like a light to these weak ass motherfuckers, and they cannot help but be drawn to the light. And one of the reasons that there are so many comments about my online course business is they can't do it. There is a think of it group and there's a teachable group on Facebook. There are thousands of people who have created online courses who cannot sell them. So they make it simple. Like the only reason you have money is because you sell online courses. The only reason you have money is you teaching people how to be rich. Once again, feminine behavior. Tell you a dirty story. I was dating this chick who was a savage. And earlier in my dating career, I did come across a few savages. 
and then I was doing things that she didn't like, and then we broke up. And you know what she said? That's why your dick is little. That's why you can't fuck. Now, I remember one time I was fucking this bitch so good that she started crying because she came so hard. But once again, I don't have a little dick. She knows that. But this is the feminine behavior. This is the feminine energy. So when they say that, they're trying to disparage me with a false narrative because they're a feminine little bitch. They act like bitches and they wonder why they can't get bitches. See, this should be strong cocaine number two because one of the things I'm telling you guys, because I, I figured out why they come from me because number one, from a psychological standpoint, if there's something you don't like, you don't put any energy into it. You just simply don't. And the fact that these fools are putting the energy into it, I had someone lie and said, oh, Bitcoin's up to 29,000. Bitcoin at the time of this video is at 22,500 bucks. And if you've been watching Bitcoin, like I watch it, it has been in a decaying orbit. It'll go up, then it'll go down. It'll go up and it'll go down. And it's been in a decaying orbit, which means it's positioned for a crash. And when, not if, when Bitcoin hits 20K, you're gonna see a massive sell-off that's probably gonna move it down to 15K. And at that point, all of the crypto boys, because I got a lot of people who wanna bet me, I have this ongoing bet. Bet you $10,000 that Bitcoin is gonna hit $20,000 and below. And everybody wants a piece of the bet until we get into the details. Number one, you must have $10,000 cash today. Number two, we must create an escrow account where I'll take my 10,000, we'll take your 10,000, put them in the escrow account. So when the event happens, you can't run like a little bitch. And when I put out those details, they don't want to bet no more. You want to know why? Because most of them don't have 10 fucking thousand dollars, which is sad. Once again, the first mandate, get your economy. I feel every single man should have access to 30K between his long-term emergency fund, his short-term emergency fund, and his family operating account. And I'm about to say something. Many of you men need to stop dating until you get your fucking lives together. You need to take a year off or a year or two, maybe two years, get your ass in the gym, get your stuff working on your economy, get your credit straight, get your money straight, and get money in the bank before you start dating because here's one of the reasons. Like, I was out with my girl today and she wanted some luggage. And she didn't ask. And the luggage was like 1600 bucks because it was a two me piece. I just went ahead and got it. And this is one of the things that you don't understand. If you are not with a woman that you want to treat well, that you want to spoil, you are dating the wrong fucking woman. Let me say that again. Once again, this is that strong cocaine number two. If you are not with a woman that you don't want to spoil, that you don't want to treat nice, that you don't want to do good things for, you are dating the wrong fucking women, woman, and that means your punk ass has settled for what you can get versus getting what you want. Strong cocaine number two. A lot of you are dating women that you don't even like. Years ago, a good friend of mine, her name's Dina, and we were talking, and she had the craziest conversation. She said, it's hilarious to see these men dating women that they don't like. The women can see it. And on Facebook, you can see it. I'm gonna give you some tips with body language. If you go to the Facebook page and you see a couple and when they're in their pictures, one of them is leaning away or there's like a V between them, they don't like each other. Couples who like each other, they're touching and they're doing things, they're, they're being together. But most of you, because you're feminine and your mama settled for some dry dick. That's why, because you're instead of modeling the behavior of your strong, masculine father you're modeling the behavior of your womb of your mother and your mother was sleeping with some dude so he could pay the electric bill and that's how you get down because that's how your mama got down i never saw such shit growing up my grandmother was my primary caretaker and my grandmother was a strong and beautiful and a great woman and i never saw that bullshit with her i never once again my mother was single there was, there was never a time that I woke up and there was a strange man in the house. Whole 18 years I lived there, never happened. I never saw men going in and out of our house. Never saw it because my mother didn't get down like that. My mother wasn't a hoe, but your mama was a hoe. 
You woke up and Mr. Charlie, Mr. Bobo, Mr. Sam's was like, good morning, little man. How you doing? As he's eating your cereal because he done fucked the shit out your mama. And he left. And see, your mama was used. Let me say this again. Your mama was a cum dump. Men after men came over, spent the night, woke up with you, woke up in your house and you woke up and you went in your mother's room and you saw this strange man and your mother said, that's your uncle Leroy because you were little and stupid. I'm gonna tell you another little dirty story. I was messing with this girl who had children and as a rule, I primarily don't mess with women who have children. And this chick, I was over her house, spent the night and she literally pushed the dresser in front of the door because her daughter would wake up in the middle of the night and come, try to come in her room. And I was seen by her children. Woke up one morning, was trying to leave, and both of them came out their room, and they're like, mommy, who's that? And I actually said, my name is Glendon. How are you doing? It's nice to meet you. What is your name? And talked to them, treated them like they had common sense, and then left. And at that point, I stopped seeing her because Here's the thing, children get attached. So if you're seeing their mom and you hanging out and the children get used to you, it is very unfair that you have not made a commitment to their mother. And what happens is the children's little hearts get broken, but more importantly, the children get programmed that this is appropriate behavior for some strange man to come fuck my mother. Once again, the kids, the kids know what's going on. The kids know what's going on. Because uh, I remember Long before I got to the state that I am, I was dealing with this chick and she had a kid. And I spent the night over there and we had to go to a funeral that day and my clothes were in her mother's room. And Taylor, the young girl's name, was moving my clothes to the guest room and she said, I was sleeping with my mom because when I sleep by myself, I get scared. So I sat down with Taylor and I said, look, you can do it. You're a big girl. You can be, you know, next time you get scared, just say, I'm not scared and ball your fist up and punch the air. And she did it. And then one day she comes in there, Mr. Glendon, I did what you said and I wasn't scared. I'm able to sleep in my room. And she hugged me. You would have thought that was a good thing. Her mother was a savage. Uh, let me talk to you. Let me holler at you for a minute. You're not her father. You don't need to be talking to her like that. Six weeks later, we had broken up because I was dating a savage. Because here's the thing, one of the reasons that I don't date women with children is the woman, because she's conflicted, is not going to allow you to be a proper role model for those children. You could fuck her, you could come in her throat, you can come in her pussy, you can come in her ass, you can do all that. But as being a stand-up, decent role model to her children, oh, fuck that. No, 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 we ain't gonna have that. We're not gonna have that. And this is a reason, as a primary rule, I don't deal with women with small children. Just don't do it. Because typically, once they get in that position, whether they're divorced or they've been a single mother from jump, they don't know how to have a relationship. They don't know how to be submissive. They don't know how to play their role. And once again, I avoid these women like I avoid crack because when I saw her pushing that dress in front of the door, I was like, what the hell? And that ain't the first time that she's done that. That ain't the first time. I wasn't the first strange dick to roll through. And one of the things that I started to do after that is I started to indoctrinate my girls. One, you had to be single. If you had kids, I wasn't fucking with you. Just wasn't fucking with you. And then I indoctrinated them, got to my place, and I trained them and I groomed them for me. Because one of the things, you weak, impotent, mentally feminine men don't understand. Because I understand why you hang around the channel. I understand why you comment and you love it when I'm wrong. And sometimes I'm wrong. Sometimes I'm wrong. You love it when I'm wrong. And it's like, see, see, see. And I have all of these feminine bitches talking about, I'm making money from crypto. But cannot afford to pay cash for a fucking Honda. You, if you invest, hundred bucks or a thousand bucks in crypto and make three thousand dollars yes indeed you're making money in crypto whether you're making life-changing money or you're making significant money no you're not i know the stats seven to eight percent of crypto holders own 90 percent of crypto which means that 10 percent is spread across the 93 percent 
So I know that most of you do not have a significant crypto portfolio. And that's when I ask your bitch ass that question, how much money has crypto made you? You will not answer because it ain't impressive. It ain't that much. And that's one of the reasons that you are a bitch because I am a real man asking you a sensible question. I've been on the planes and I've met business owners who've told me it's like, yeah, we did 11 million, but on the internet, why? And under a fake ass avatar, you do not want to tell me how much money crypto made you made because you ain't made shit. And this is why you are a feminine bitch ass man because you live in an alternate false narrative university. Universe, you don't deal with reality. And this is one of the realities. Because if you dealt with reality, you would understand that you were dating savages. You would understand that maybe you need to go into monk mode for a year, get yourself together, then come back a new man. No, you're gonna come out here and you're gonna come on YouTube and you're gonna join all of these channels that disparage women because they won't give you no pussy. So you're gonna become a pussy because you can't get no pussy. And it's really not that hard. I was watching a video with a data scientist who said they conducted analysis of online dating and they did a research of what happens when a one messages a 10. The one has a 14% of chance of success online. You take it offline, that goes up to 30%. So literally from a statistical standpoint, if you approach four hot women, you're gonna get one. But I've told you this because your bitch ass so fucking weak, she told me no, I get rejected, I'm depressed, oh, I can't leave the house, oh. Weak ass motherfucker. If you were practicing the disruptive male stuff, if a woman told you no, you know what you say? All right, next. That shit wouldn't phase you if you were a strong, mentally strong man. It wouldn't phase you. You'd be like, next, next. Because another reason that a lot of y'all hate me is when I was posting receipts, it was like, he was fucking her. And a lot of you, due to what happened in October, oh, how old is she? Even though she clearly looked to be 20 to 30 years old, even clearly, and you would just joke because Here's the thing, and this is what I do. I make you confront reality. I make you take that strong cocaine and you fucking hate me because, yeah, I'm wrong every now and then, but most of the time I'm fucking right. And you can't stand it because my thesis is built on truth, honesty, and real data. I do not consume all of these, you know, because like frankly, I'm thinking about giving up the mail channel because I can tell you until the cows come home what you need to do to be successful with women and because you are a feminized, weak little bitch, you won't do it. You just won't do it. And every time I talk about marriage, one of the reasons I'm not married, and I'm gonna admit it, I'm having a fucking ball. I'm, I'm having a, oh my God. If I wanted to fuck five different women this week, I could, every night different girl if I could if I wanted that but one of the things that I'm doing is practice and restraint because I got to change my behavior if I want to be married in the future because right now I am not fit to be married because I haven't fully changed my behavior because I've been fucking chicks fucking them in the ass coming down their throat and oh yeah for all you folks like I don't share your video because of the sex stories you think your children don't know about sex your kids know more about sex than you do because they're watching Pornhub, you porn. They know. I ain't gonna send it because my kids, your kids know. Your kids can watch my shit. And this is another thing. When I was a kid, parents did not overprotect their children. Push this out into the world, go outside, play 7.30 in the morning, don't come back inside to six, seven o'clock, all sweaty. You trying to protect your children and you're actually not serving them well because you're trying to protect them from some shit they already know. If you sat down honestly with your, your ass sailed across the sea on this hot ass ship 
went to war, and you think, oh, because she's 10, I'm not going to fuck her. Give me a fucking break. Study history. When these people conquered another people, they enslaved the people, they raped the women. That's what real fucking men did. That's what the world is built on. You think when Christopher Columbus came here and found the Indians, you think they didn't fuck those bitches? They fucked those bitches. They did it. So for all of you weak men who, for some reason, and like every now and then I'll get someone that's like, this guy gives good advice, but he likes to fuck with 15, 16 year olds. Let me say something on that. If you can come up with proof that I consistently fucked 15 and 16 year olds, prove it. Don't just say it, prove it. Because bitch ass Anton Daniels put that super predator tag on me. And many of you who are incapable of thinking went ahead with that. Cause I got many emails. It's like, what you did, you didn't break the law based upon Georgia state law. But once again, you know, and Anton, I actually looked at his channel and all he talks about is bullshit. For someone that who's supposed to be a millionaire, he rarely talks about business topics. It's about relationships, Kevin saying, and I'm just sitting there like, but you're supposed to be an entrepreneur. How come you ain't talking about this shit? How come you ain't building your platform on that shit? Because he can't, because he's another little bitch. So for all you folks who got something to say, prove it, prove it. Because one of the things that I consistently see is that people like to spread falsehoods and they like to participate in gossip, which is very, very fucking feminine. Like if I don't like somebody like Erica, I don't watch her shit because I don't like the bitch. Anton, I don't watch his shit because I don't like the fucker. If I don't like you, I am not going to invest time, effort and energy into you. But you fuckers claim that you don't like me, but you all up my ass. It's a funny, it's fucking funny. But once again, this is the problem with moist men. Moist men hurt our country from a productivity standpoint. They hurt our country because they're using women. And let's talk about that. I have fucked a lot of women. And I know a lot of them, oh, there he goes again bragging. Now, Michael Jordan, if you done it, it ain't bragging if you done it. And I never used these girls. I fucked them, I had my fun, but you know the average chick spent the night? And that's how you know if you're dealing with a savage. If she can come over and fuck you, and I don't care if it's three o'clock in the morning she needs to leave, you're dealing with a savage. You're dealing with a savage because these people cannot emotionally connect. They just can't. And one of the things that I consistently see in during this global reset, a lot of these men are gonna have a come to Jesus moment. They're gonna be looking in the mirror, they're gonna have that day where they're gonna wake up and they're gonna realize just how fucked up they are. They're gonna realize, like when I said, and I'm gonna say it, all of you people who made money with crypto, you got lucky because of the crypto hype cycle. You were not skilled, dedicated, real investors. You just fucking got lucky on a hype cycle. I will stand by that statement because when crypto drops, not if, when, what the fuck you gonna do? Let's see how financially savvy you are then when that shit melts down because Bitcoin is in the decaying orbit and it's gonna go below 20K. It's just a matter of time because right now the crypto bros are trying to keep it up because they're trying to put out false press and there's one company that has $4 billion worth of crypto and they borrowed the money to buy the crypto and if crypto goes under 20K, they're gonna face a margin call and they may not have the money, which means they're gonna to have to liquidate their crypto. That's gonna be a whole bunch of crypto that comes on the market to satisfy their margin call. And by law, they have to do this. They, they don't have an option of, hey, we're not gonna sell it, we're just gonna wait this out and we're not gonna pay, no, 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 no. By law, they're gonna to have to liquidate their crypto because the people that they borrowed the money can seize the crypto as collateral and dispose of it as they see fit. So, once again, this is that strong cocaine number two. A lot of you choose to be losers. You don't have to be a loser, but you choose to be a loser because you don't want to be active in your life. 
You don't want to be proactive. You don't want to try to solve problems. All you want to do is come to the internet and bitch and whine like a little bitch. That's all you want to do. And it's going to catch up with you. Because here's the thing. Sally Mae Jones, if you live long enough, you're going to get old. And one day your ass going to be 65 years old up in your room with your two cats. That's going to be you. That's what's waiting for your weak bitch ass. Because unless you facilitate change today, that's what's waiting for you. That's what's waiting for you. And I can't, you know, I can't help you. You know, if you want to continue to be a loser your whole life, that's your choice. But I'm telling you, as we have all of these single mothers, we have all these feminized men, because I, I laugh every time I see someone mention who should pay for the first date. It cracks me up because that's just a sign of weakness. It's just a sign of a lack of leadership. It's a sign that you don't have your money together. If you cannot afford to take a girl out on a date, you should not be dating. Drop the mic.